。虽然攒了一百万粉丝啊，但是我觉得我混不下去了。Although I have accumulated a million followers, I don't think I can survive in this market anymore. The revenue from my videos is insufficient to cover my basic expenses. My expenses are not just about renting a place and dining. There are other significant costs. When it comes to live commerce, if the product quality is high, the profit margins are too slim to make a substantial income. My nights are so busy, but the earnings are disappointingly minimal, beyond what most can imagine. Yet, having reached a million followers, who could give up on this market at this stage? It's truly difficult. If things continue this way, I won't be able to make ends meet. If live commerce isn't profitable, what should I do next? Why am I crying? Because I'm too tired. Because I've lost my sense of self. Because I missed home. Because I feel lonely. I've seen enough of the absurdities of this world. I can't continue like this. I am planning to host a live streaming farewell event sincerely. This narrative unfolds within the broader context of China's flourishing online environment. Where the live streaming market has rapidly ascended, enticing numerous youths with the prospect of lucrative earnings. According to a recent study, as of now, there are 15.08 million professional live streamers in China. However, the majority find themselves at the bottom of an economic pyramid. Experts note that 2% of these streamers capture 80% of the income, leaving the vast majority struggling for basic sustenance. The research report on the development of China's online audiovisual industry reveals that as of December 2023, there are over 1.55 billion short video accounts, meaning roughly one in every 100 people in China is a professional streamer. Mainstream short video platforms upload close to 80 million videos daily, and there are more than 3.5 million live streaming sessions. China has approximately 1.41 million live streaming-related businesses, registering steady growth over the past decade, particularly in the last three years, with an increase between 90% to 200%. Live commerce, a novel business model of the internet age, has robustly surged. According to the Ministry of Commerce, in the first 11 months of 2023, national online retail sales reached 14 trillion yuan. With live streaming sales exceeding 2.2 trillion yuan, marking a 58.9 percent increase from the previous year and constituting 18.1 percent of the total online retail revenue, the data further shows that among those whose primary income is from live streaming, only 0.4 percent earn more than 100,000 yuan per month, while 95.2 percent earn less than 5,000 yuan. Top streamers who sit at the pinnacle of the industry benefit from multiple roles and significant market influence driven by their high viewership. In contrast, grassroots streamers struggle daily with empty studios, putting forth tremendous effort to attract viewers, often for minimal rewards. Orange, representing the 95.2 percent, told Mainland Media about her intent to resign after just three months. The pay is too low for the amount of work involved. Even after a day's work, what I earn isn't enough to buy medicine to protect my throat. Initially, I signed on with a base salary of three thousand yuan and a one percent commission, streaming for six hours a day. As a novice, I thought of it as a learning experience, but I soon realized that the work extends beyond streaming hours, including script writing, managing the broadcast, organizing goods, and reviewing data. Unfortunately, the company, being in its initial phase, skims on investing in traffic. Rarely selling more than 30 orders a day, earning me just five yuan per order. Before becoming a streamer, Orange thought the job seemed glamorous, as simple as talking in front of a camera. But the reality proved far more grueling. She explained, "Speaking nonstop for six hours leaves your throat smoking. Some streamers even bring atomizers into the studio to spray their throats during breaks just to keep going. You also need a strong psychological tolerance." Some comments can make you break down on the spot. Yet you must keep smiling for the camera and manage your emotions. Many young people like Orange are drawn to the allure of internet fame and the live streaming wave, seeking success, but often facing unstable incomes and high necessary expenditures. As they pursue their dreams, they encounter setbacks and confusion, while some unscrupulous individuals exploit their aspirations by offering costly courses. Only the top-tier live streamers earn substantial amounts. Among them, Li Jiaqi, renowned for adeptly using cosmetics on his face to drive sales, has earned the nickname "Lipstick King" and attracts tens of millions of viewers per live session. 
Kim Kardashian once appeared on a live stream with another top Chinese live streamer, Via, to promote her perfume in China, selling 15,000 bottles in just minutes. These top streamers embody a rags to riches myth, serving as a powerful motivator for countless young people. However, in recent years, as China's economy has continued to decline, any industry with low entry barriers ultimately becomes extremely competitive due to severe internal competition. We see that those earning $10 million a month are just a few top players. According to mainland media reports, major streamers can earn hundreds of thousands of yuan from a successful live session, and sometimes even more. On platforms like Huai Show, emergent figures such as Crazy Little Young Brothers and Simba, or on Douyin with Oriental Selection and Make a Friend, can see millions or tens of millions of yuan in revenue per live stream. The most successful streamers are both salespeople and entertainers. They sell products ranging from home appliances to cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, and food in a rushed and energetic tone. They have the urgency of an auctioneer while maintaining the warmth of a close friend. They tell jokes, engage in small talk, and keep their audience engaged. They call out certain fans by name, winning their trust. They promise exclusive deals to boost sales. The occasional stories of making a fortune through live streaming have overly encouraged many young Chinese to pursue a career in this field. According to a Weibo survey on what contemporary young people are focusing on in terms of employment, 61.6% of nearly 10,000 surveyed recent graduates said they would consider emerging professions like internet celebrity or live streaming. What if I become famous? I could earn enough money for a lifetime in just a few years. With this thought, many young people are eager to try their luck. At night, under a city bridge or in a corner of a market, all are live streamers, squatting, standing, sitting, men and women alike, singing and dancing. Their eyes are fixed on the mobile phone, on the tripod in front of them, indifferent to the throngs around them. Similar videos are easily found with a simple swipe. Live commerce has taken off in China because it combines several factors. Consumer downgrading, the ubiquity of social media, the influence of streamers, support from internet platforms, and the impact of the pandemic. It meets the needs of consumers and businesses alike, becoming a popular and large-scale business model. With the booming growth of the live commerce industry, frequent issues with chaotic sales practices on some streaming platforms have raised significant public concern and social debate. Some streamers have also exploited public sympathy by selling counterfeit goods after making emotional appeals. On March 19, 21-year-old popular internet celebrity Liang Shan Mengyang was sentenced to 11 months in prison and fined 80,000 yuan for false advertising. She had constructed a completely fictitious persona, exploiting the sympathy of netizens by selling non-local agricultural products in her live streams, under the guise of helping farmers from Liangshan. In 2018, Liangshan Mengyang fabricated a tragic backstory that quickly garnered online fame. She claimed she was an orphan who had to drop out of school to take care of her younger siblings, subsisting on potatoes every day. In over 500 videos, she portrayed herself living in a dilapidated mud house, her skin darkened, and her body frail. Dressed in tattered clothes, either chopping wood in the mountains or toiling in the fields. She claimed that her dire financial situation forced her to earn additional income through short video content, touching the hearts of many viewers with her tragic circumstances. After gaining popularity, Liang Shan Mengyang frequently engaged in live commerce, claiming to be busy harvesting local specialties daily to help the villagers. Within a few years, she amassed 3.86 million followers. Her team made over 10 million yuan from live streaming sales. With her rural home or dilapidated house as a backdrop, Liang Shang Mengyang claimed that the agricultural products she sold were authentic local produce from Liang Shan. However, viewers discovered that the products she sold, such as bird's nests and walnuts, were not shipped from Liang Shan. At the same time, some netizens suspected that her videos were staged to evoke pity and produced by professional team. She also visited upscale venues wearing luxury watches and designer clothes. In response to these allegations, she once stated, quote, I have never exploited my misfortune for sympathy. I am genuine in my live streams and don't have a team. 
How could a young girl like me have so much money? Further investigations by netizens who visited Liang Shang Wen Yang's supposed location revealed that not only were her parents alive, but the dilapidated house used in her streams was also a prop. One netizen reported Liang Shan Meng Yang for staging her videos and fabricating her persona with the help of a professional team. Subsequently, authorities intervened and discovered that her claims about her parents' deaths and her dropping out of school to care for her siblings were all false. Moreover, Liang Shan Meng Yang's team was found to have hired an internet water army to flood her live streams with comments and to manipulate sales, creating the illusion of popular demand to entice consumers. However, this case is just the tip of the iceberg in the chaotic live commerce industry, where the sale of counterfeit branded goods at low prices is rampant, dazzling consumers. A so-called century-old Diotai liquor from Guizhou was found to have originated from a distillery established just over a year ago. In a live streaming session, the host fervently promoted Diotai liquor, boasting Guizhou has three great spirits: Mao Tai, Guo Tai, and Diotai. The host claimed it as the younger brother of Mao Tai. He declared that these bottles of 53 degrees Mao Tai flavored liquor. Which would cost 399 yuan on other platforms were offered for just 39.90 yuan for two bottles, including nationwide shipping. The host asserted that the liquor had been produced since 1919 and had a century-long history, claiming while Mao Tai is about branding, Dio Tai focuses on quality. However, consumers discovered, based on the packaging information provided during the live stream. That the company producing this century-old liquor was only established in 2023. The chaos of live commerce has become a frequent topic of concern, highlighted by its negative effects and increasingly criticized by many. Some hosts are willing to do anything for money, often disregarding product quality entirely. Such behavior not only disrupts market order but also harms consumer interests. After a tumultuous period in the industry, the live commerce sector appears to be stabilizing and even quieting down in 2024. Although top streamers have been the biggest beneficiaries of the live e-commerce boom, consumers are now scrutinizing their actions closely, and platforms have long agreed on a strategy of de-emphasizing top streamers. On one hand, brands engaged in live commerce report slim profits. Several brands interviewed stated that although top streamers still attract viewers, their cost effectiveness has diminished. Veteran e-commerce professional Justin remarked, "Big streamers can drive sales, but an 80% loss. Brands are now focusing on selling directly online as their main sales strategy. On the other hand, concepts such as induced consumption, desire-based shopping, premature consumption, impulse buying, and herd consumption have increasingly become intertwined with live commerce. Interviews with several streamers reveal high return rates in live commerce, with a successful control at under 10 percent. However, return rates for some clothing items can reach as high as 70 percent, indicating a strong irrational component in consumers' live shopping behavior. Live streamers also face the challenge of maintaining consumer trust. The enthusiasm for purchasing from top streamers is waning as consumers become more rational about these products. After all, everyone wants value for their money. Influential streamers prone to blunders have also leveraged significant changes in the live commerce industry. Numerous top streamers have been caught in scandals involving misleading promotions. Which has become a primary issue in live commerce. Consumer protection related to live commerce platforms by Li Jiaqi and Crazy Little Brother Yang accounts for 70 percent of all public complaints. Issues related to false advertising, product quality, and pricing deception comprise over 80 percent. According to incomplete statistics from mainland media, complaints about products sold by top streamers number in the tens of thousands. Miss Guo from Shanghai, a fan of live streaming, used to purchase items during every live stream until she discovered that the products sold did not meet national standards. She expressed her disillusionment. Seeing a product I like being sold by a top streamer with millions of followers, I would buy it instantly. Who would have thought that even top streamers could have problematic goods? 
I don't know who to trust in live commerce anymore. Some netizens have commented that these sales streams are full of traps and scams, enriching only a few streamers and companies at the expense of hindering the development of countless businesses nationwide and stealing millions of job opportunities. Recently, many top streamers have considered quitting. On the evening of March 14, Simba announced his upcoming departure from the live commerce field, stating, quote, Nothing is exciting left in the market for me. Simba is ranked as the top live commerce streamer in China, accounting for 30% of Kwai Show's live commerce sales. Crazy Little Brother Yang also indicated in early March that he plans to reduce the frequency of his live sales in 2024. Dong Xiaorong, a director of the Beijing-based Technology Research Institute, believes that stricter management of live commerce has increased operational costs. When issue arrives with products sold, streamers and their companies face significant responsibilities and consequences, which is a direct reason for top streamers phasing out of live commerce. Professor Chen Li Ping from the Capital University of Economics and Business noted that the biggest issue with live commerce platforms is the mixture of good and bad products, with poor quality and counterfeit goods flooding the market. Additionally, the high rate of returns also results in significant societal costs. Many platforms have ultimately undermined their business through live commerce. Tian Li Ming, vice president of He Mai He Da Group, candidly stated that public opinion has been overwhelmingly negative towards top streamers in recent years. Major platform streamers have been accused of monopolizing traffic across levels, forcing manufacturers into unsustainable price wars. Moreover, frequent appearances in discussions related to taxation and live stream fails have forced top streamers to tread carefully. Recently, the Chinese government has begun to regulate online live streaming. On January 3rd, Douyin implemented a health score system, penalizing nearly 5,000 streamers. Of these, 303 were banned from receiving gifts and 190 were permanently stripped of their live streaming rights. On April 9th, the State Council Information Office held a press briefing to announce that starting July 1st, there will be refined regulations for the implementation of the nation's law on the protection of consumer rights and interests, particularly regulating the popular live commerce sector. Regulations demand clear disclosures about who is selling and whose products are being sold. Kuang Shu, Director General of the Bureau of Law Enforcement and Inspection of the State Administration for Market Regulation, stated at the press briefing that in the past five years, the scale of China's live e-commerce market has grown 10.5 times. However, the increase in complaints and reports has been 47.1 times higher than in traditional e-commerce, highlighting a significant imbalance between development and regulation. Observers believe that the myth of wealth creation by top live commerce streamers is now a thing of the past. Much like a grand feast, it has inevitably settled into a period of calm.